No one has ever imagined that the ancient and feuding European clans and kingdoms would ever see a day in which they become a unified bloc and a modern global economic superpower. And even since the European Union began to form and expand in a rather gradual and complex manner under various agreements and accords since 1948, most experts thought that it simply would not last. Even recently, right after the UK left the EU, experts predicted that the Union would collapse. But here it is still standing, growing and building incredible giga projects that baffle the mind and take decades to complete. One of these giga projects is the massive $1 trillion Trans-European Transport Network, 10T for short, which will make the entire continent of Europe connected by an efficient, complex, and new network of land, air, waterways, and sea corridors. Can the EU do it and really complete the 10T network in the next three decades? Is the 10T project progressing as planned? And can the EU states overcome their historical and modern differences and the project's budget issues? The answer, it is complicated, and the devil is in the details. First, let's clarify something important. Europe is not like the United States or Canada, which are quite new and technically speaking the offspring of the historical British Empire. Both Canada and the US, which are much bigger than Europe, were established and reinforced as federations due to aggressive pursuit of building East Coast to West Coast railways and highways in addition to major North-South roads and highways. So they were established upon a massive transportation network. Additionally, English was the predominant language that facilitated the Union. On the other hand, Europe is a collective of ancient clans turned nations that are just as old as humanity's history itself. Each European nation has its own distinct heritage, culture, history, way of life, language, and even political system. After World War I, a movement for the unification of Europe began to emerge with the goal of preventing a repeat of such a major war. However, it was not until the end of World War II that this movement began gaining traction. The year 1948 marked the beginning of the institutionalized modern European integration. In March 1948, the Treaty of Brussels was signed and was followed by a whole bunch of agreements that resulted in the official formation of the European Union, which to this date is still adding nations to the bloc. Today, the EU has 24 official languages and boasts 27 members and is still expanding as it is expected to eventually unify all 44 European countries, well, except Russia. So make that 43 states under a system that is unique since it is a mix of confederation and federation. In 1990, the EU leadership began realizing that the bloc is not connected at all except by air. In fact, a simple car or train trip from one EU state to another was taking so long, people did not feel that they were living in a unified single market union without any travel restrictions. Additionally, it was a nightmare for freight and associated costs. A freight container going from one state to another would have to be moved via a combination of train, truck, and in many cases boat too between various states. Truckers had to take narrow rural roads between the mountains and forests to move goods between EU states. Railways were either too short or non-existent altogether between the various states and were not originally designed to link so many major cities and the industrial areas, so that system was a nightmare too. The solution for this dilemma, and to ensure Europe's and the EU's future as an interconnected and exceedingly efficient major industrial and business hub, a decision was made to revamp and expand all EU states' internal transport networks and link them to a massive continent-wide advanced network of roads, highways, airports, waterways, seaports, and even tunnels. This project is called the 10T Network, which has been around since 1994. Parts of it have been implemented, but the lion's share of this $600 billion giga project is still under construction and will not be fully completed until 2050. The Trans-European Transport Network, 10T, consists of primary roads, railways, inland waterways, airports, seaports, inland ports, and traffic management systems. The goal of this project can be summed as follows. Eliminate all of the transportation bottlenecks within EU states and between the different states, while eliminating the missing links by establishing a Europe-wide network that dramatically reduces travel time and facilitates freight. So why is it taking so long to construct this project 
and the planners made so many changes over the years? The answer has to do with history, politics, and EU expansion. When the plan was put forward, the EU had only 12 members, but today, it boasts 27 member states. Additionally, the EU is still expanding, so once again the planner had to adjust the plans to literally make it a Europe-wide project that includes non-members such as Turkey, Ukraine, and the UK, which left the EU in the famous Brexit fiasco. Additionally, the EU, as we explained earlier, is not exactly accepted by the entire populations of member states. Changes in governments often meant changes in policies to please the voters, which caused major delays. There is also the fear factor. Many people in most EU states are quite protective of their distinct history, culture, heritage, and language, and view the union itself and the 10T network as a threat to their identity. There is also the big elephant in the room, which is money for the project. While most EU states have no problems upgrading and expanding their own state's transportation infrastructure, which technically represents phase one of the GIGA project and will be complete by 2030, some states find the additional request to accommodate phase two to be expensive and out of their reach. This fact is putting pressure on EU heavyweights such as France and Germany in particular. Nevertheless, once phase one is complete by 2030, all budgetary issues related to phase two should be resolved. It is important to point out here that the Trans-European Transport Network is part of a wider trillion-dollar Terra project that is just too massive and includes Europe-wide telecommunications and energy networks. The details are many, so here is a summary. In October 2013, the 10T network finally began to take a defined shape and was divided into two levels, the comprehensive network and the core network which as of 2021 had nine core network corridors. Funding sources have also been diversified furthermore to include in addition to the national or state governments, the European Community Funds, loans from international financial institutions such as the European Investment Bank, and private funding. The nine core network corridors are complex, interconnected, and designed for easy navigation. Here are some of them to put things in perspective for you. The 1491 miles Baltic Adriatic Corridor from Poland to Italy via Vienna. The 1988 miles North Sea Baltic Corridor from Finland to Belgium via Warsaw. The 1864 miles Mediterranean Corridor from Spain to Hungary via Lyon in France and Venice in Italy. The 2300 miles Orient East Mediterranean Corridor from Germany via Budapest and Sofia to Cyprus. The others are the 3,020 miles Scandinavian Mediterranean Corridor from Finland via Copenhagen and Munich to Malta, the Rhine Alpine Corridor, the Atlantic Corridor, the North Sea Mediterranean Corridor, which runs from Dublin in Ireland to Brussels, and finally the Rhine Danube Corridor from France to Romania. So it is quite obvious that all EU member states and non members too are part of the project that has expanded over time to include connections to the United Kingdom, Switzerland, the South Mediterranean, Turkey, and the Western Balkans. The 10T is not just a collection of integrated roads, highways, railways, airports, seaports, and waterways. It is rather a blueprint that once completed will turn the entire continent of Europe into a massive interconnected industrial hub like no other in the world. It will dramatically reduce travel time for people and freight alike in a very organized, easy to monitor safe manner while eliminating traffic congestion and customs problems. Additionally, the network will eventually connect to the Maritime Silk Road, which is an under construction sea route with integrated port and coastal infrastructure projects running from China's east coast to Europe, India, Africa, and the Pacific through the South China Sea and the Indian Ocean. And it will be eventually connected to the Silk Road Economic Belt, which is another Chinese giga project designed to revitalize a series of ancient overland trading routes connecting Europe and Asia. Are you from Europe? Do you think the EU will be able to expand further in the next few years? Do you believe that Europe will be able to complete this massive project by 2050? And will it bring prosperity to small and big EU states equally as advertised? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you, and do not forget to like and subscribe.